Well, tonight we present a different type of a report from our Craig Worth here. Now, normally from Craig, we see his look backs at our daily life in Utah through his humorous, light, or nostalgic lens. Now, once in a while, we see a more poignant feature from him. And Craig, we know there's another serious side to your work, a documentary you've been working on for the past eight months. Well, you know, I wanted to do what I consider to be one of the most important documentaries of my career, and this one is on the Indian schools of Utah. Now, they stripped the culture of the indigenous people, taking away the language and the spiritual practices. Now, I took an interest in the schools in my day job. I do communications for the Utah Episcopal Churches. Now, we can debate over and over if the government and religious operated schools started with good intentions or were a calculated effort to strip the culture in genocide. We do know the schools were failed experiments. Now, here's a short excerpt of my documentary, which debuts tomorrow at the Salt Lake Public Library at 6.30. And I thank ABC4 and all of you for allowing me to show this. The peaceful land of White Rocks, Utah, holds a story that is now hidden by brush and grasses. This was the location of the Uinta Indian School, one of over 500 such schools in America's past. Schools that are often remembered with tales of sadness. The Indian schools were designed to strip centuries of culture, to banish centuries of spiritual living. Psychological damage was rampant. Punishment was severe, sickness was common. Death was not uncommon, much was never reported. Forrest Kutch is a Ute elder living in the White Rocks area. Do you think in this land that's sacred ground that there might be some bodies here? Oh, definitely. There's definitely some bodies here. Not as many as some of the other schools that have been reported throughout the country. But, you know, kids uh, at that, during that time were or suffering a lot of depression, um, trauma. They were lonely for their families. There is little left of the couple dozen buildings that made up the school. A map made from the memories of those who knew the place gives us an idea of how big it was. The government and religious organizations operated the schools. The schools were designed to destroy the native culture, one child at a time. That was what most of the Christian schools were designed to do, is to eliminate the Indian but save the man. And so destroy the culture, the language, and keep the people alive. To punish children caught speaking Ute, they remember. Ute elder Adelbert Tavishutes was only five years old when he attended the school with his cousin. The teacher heard them whispering in Ute. She said, I want you two to now sit close together. And she took the uh, yardstick and whacked us over the head. And it broke. And when it did break, <clears throat> Probably about maybe a uh, your, uh, maybe a, a foot of it was in her hand, and she told us to put our hands out, and she started to whipping them. To cut their hair short like white kids, dress them like white kids, all the same, right down to the pioneer dresses. The government fought those who resisted. The police got $5 for every indigenous child that they could bring into school. That's something you can't really do. You can't take away people's culture. You can't take away their language. It was the government's mandate, with religion stepping in to help Christianize the children. I was a kid of the 1950s, and like many, I had never heard of an Indian school, nor about the rich culture, or even what was going on in a place such as this, White Rocks. 
The Reverend Michael Carney is the Episcopal priest who has lived among the Utes for a decade. It was devastating to Native communities and nations, and it breaks my heart to know that the communities and the institution of the church that I'm part of played major roles in that. It's now a story of reconciliation. Can it work? Young people want to hear the truth. They know when we're not telling them the truth. Mm. Wow. Craig. So compelling. Well, like I say, that's just an excerpt of it, and we'll have the whole documentary tomorrow, 6.30, a pre, you know, free public showing at the Salt Lake Library. Tomorrow night. And Craig, you've been working on this for a while. Can you tell us, is there anything throughout the, the project that's stood out to you especially? You know, what stood out is that good people stood by, and we didn't know what was going on. That's what stands out. For a hundred years, there were things going on that good people stood by. That's sad.